I don't know if you can pick this up from the camera, but I mean, in person, this looks ugly. This tire looks ugly, as you can see here. And um, it's really bumpy. Well, but that's the problem. That's why this car feels bumpy. Good morning. This is the first vlog that I'm going. I'm making for this uh, channel. Oh, by the way, I'm having some peanut butter sandwich right here. Um, I don't know how it's going to go. So, uh, if you want to check it out or you want to see how my day goes as a mobile mechanic, um, it's it's raining today. Looks like it's going to rain. It doesn't it doesn't look like seal that. But um, you know we. We'll have to work. So I'm, I'm going to go pick up some parts at Nissan right now because I'm working on a Nissan Frontier. <clears throat> it's a knock sensor. <clears throat> I don't like the the uh, aftermarket knock sensors because I had a problem with one in a Toyota and I just don't like it anymore. I, I that was too much and it was under underneath the intake manifold and then. Um, so I'm not going to mess with with uh, aftermarket knock sensors now so I'm gonna go get one at Nissan and um, I'm gonna get the intake manifold gasket because this one is also underneath the intake manifold so I'm gonna go do that and uh, if you want to tag along so let's do it <laughs> well they didn't have it the knock sensor they don't carry the knock sensors anymore well it's not something that they, they stock anymore because it's too expensive and the knock sensor was about 200 and something and they said that usually people just get the aftermarket ones they are cheaper I've had problems with the aftermarket knock sensors and this one is under the intake manifold so if I get an aftermarket one for this well I have no choice to get an aftermarket one hopefully it works uh, they work but it's the it's the little details that make it the like the numbers the, the signal that it gives and you know but that's the problem it's, I mean it's okay I'll have to get in an aftermarket now I should have just called before driving up to this place I usually do that I don't know why I, did, I didn't call today we're here this is the Nissan that I'm working on it's a Nissan Frontier um, first I'm going to diagnose the knock sensor I want to make sure that that's the problem that it's not like a broken wire or something like that so I'm gonna diagnose that the proper way and put a sensor in it if it needs to be So we're here for this quick knock sensor, but it's out. it has a cylinder one misfire, so we, I have to diagnose this so that the check engine light goes off. I can 
smell I can smell gas that's not like not being burnt and also I can feel a little misfire so there is a misfire I I can feel it so it could be the spark plug the wire the injector or compression in the in the cylinder but those are the things that could make make it misfire it it is not like a dead cylinder it is something that misfires it's not a dead cylinder so it's not so it's not it's like intermittent it's an intermittent problem but it's current right now I can feel it so on the knock sensor it has on this on um, the one that it has in in it right now it has no continuity to it so the way that works is this right here if you don't know this is the knock sensor right here this is the wiring diagram for the knock sensor I'm using Mitchell for that can you focus 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 okay there we go that's the knock sensor right there and right down here is a uh, is a um, is the symbol for ground so that means you can see that the the little square thing on there that's the knock sensor and inside of it there's a little glass and all that the, all that stuff that goes on inside of the knock sensor but down here is uh, the symbol and it's right on that little square and that means that the that uh, the, the knock sensor grounds directly to the block of the engine um, the white the white wire right there is the wire that goes to the PCM which is uh, 20 right here let's see get it back there 20 right here in the other page there's the there's 20 goes directly right here to the knock sensor K and K uh, knock sensor right there that's the that's the, the 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 engine control module right here or ECM right there that's the white wire right here and then it goes to this connector right here to the to the ECM the engine computer from this side from this side right here it goes to the knock sensor underneath this intake manifold right here
All right, this is where I am so far. I got the upper upper part of the intake manifold out, and I'm going to eat right now. I got some food from. Uh, I ordered some food with reeds, so I'm gonna eat my food that came in from Uber Eats uh, it's raining right now but I got my tarp up right now so it's all good so much just to get to a little knock sensor <laughs> knock sensor is right there that's what I'm replacing now got everything is out, everything else out so I'm gonna be replacing the intake of uh, the lower plenum gasket the upper plan intake manifold gasket um, and uh, all that well looks like I'm not going to be able to finish it today because right of this right here uh, there's a hole in that tube right there and that's for the antifreeze and that leaks it was leaking when I took this off so I thought the that it was the hose that goes on it but as I was cleaning the rust off of it I saw that that's a hole in, in, in that tube right there goes back there and then goes down back here to another hose so I gotta get that tube or what I'm thinking is I don't think I can find this tube and this the owner of this car of this truck needs the needs the truck as soon as possible so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get just hoses and eliminate that tube right there because that tube runs from a hose to another hose so and then there's a little hose like this much that goes to another tube so what I'm thinking is I'm I'm going to just eliminate that tube right there and put a, a straight hose from that one tube uh, all the way ba back there to the other tube to the intake manifold because that uh, ho that that um, hose right there or that tube runs to runs the antifreeze to the uh, intake manifold or the uh, throttle body. I don't think I can find it at the other auto part stores and uh, unless I go to a junkyard but this is going that's going to take a long time and the the owner of this truck needs it right away cuz he, he he uses it for work um that's what I'm thinking of doing if if I can find the tube then I'll get a tube and put it in there but if I can't find a tube then I'll just I'll just get a straight hose and run it to the to the throttle body that's what I'm going to do and I'm going to tell him about that that plan if he likes it then we're going we're going for it if we want he wants the tube then we're going for that too yeah, if that's what he wants so but I'm going home I mean I'm going to do another car right now I gotta go check another car uh, it's about four or five right now no it's about four but it's already dark I I had an appointment at three and I'm late to that appointment I, I, I already let the the owner of the car, the, the where I'm where I'm going I already let them know that I'm late but it's dark already this is life as a mobile mechanic <laughs> so you know um, let's go I'll take you with me all right, so this is the next car. This is a Dodge Stratus. This right here feels bumpy. Uh, I already test drove it, and it feels like it feels bumpy when when driving it. And I think that it's a tire. I think it's this tire right here that is the problem. I think this tire right here needs to be replaced, but I'm not sure. So I'm just going to um, I'm going to. Um, check it and if I can't see anything I'm going to put the the front tires to the back and then front the the rear tires to the front 
and then test drive it again to see if uh, because I can feel it in the in the steering wheel and I can feel it you know in the front of the car so if I feel it on the back of the car and I don't feel it in the steering wheel anymore so then it's it's just the, the the tires but I'm, obviously I'm going to get it up and check and check the suspension and all of that to see what the problem is but. bar right here to to move it but I'll just show it to you because you can see it from the outside the boot is where it is torn out um, but the ball joints definitely are bad I'm, I'm still going to put the, the front tires to the back and the back tires to the front um, just in case the tires are bad too better uh, right I think it's better. Anyways, you'll be able to see. Let's see, let's go. Come on, camera. Focus, focus. Right there. Okay, now it's better. Can you see that that boot is ripped off? Well, all the grease has come out of it and dust has gone into it has gotten into it and now it's bad the ball joint is bad so it's the same thing on the other side okay hopefully you get, hopefully you saw that um, so this is the problem here everything else looks okay I mean this is an old car but everything look, else looks okay so I'm gonna put the tires on the back No wonder this car felt really bumpy. You can see here, that's almost exploding. This is about to explode. This tire right here, uh, so this tire was on the back. As you can see here, the, the lines that come here, they are not straight. You see how... <laughs> and this is the big bump on it, like right here. I don't know. I don't know if you can pick this up from the camera, but I mean, in person, this looks ugly. This tire looks ugly. As you can see here, um, it's really bumpy. Well, but that's the problem. That's why this car feels bumpy, and uh, it's a tire, and front ball joints are bad, but definitely this would make it, this would be really bumpy on the road, so this has to be replaced and it should improve really good i mean it should improve a lot by replacing this this tire right here so then um she can get the the um ball joints replaced later i know she's on a budget so that'd be this first and then the other thing later <laughs> 